Keanu Reeves does Gung Fu, rides horses and fights motorcycle ninjas in John Wick 3, Parabellum. Okay, that would have been a lot cooler if I actually had a real gun. I just had my fingers. It's late, but please forgive me. Now let's talk about John Wick 3 Parabellum. Now when it comes to the John Wick films, I really enjoyed the first movie. It's so simple and streamlined. It's a guy getting vengeance for the death of his dog. I can stand by that. And when it comes to John Wick 2, it tried to go bigger, but it wasn't necessarily better for me. And now how good is the third movie in the John Wick series? Well. Let's talk about it in just one second. This video is sponsored by an awesome podcast series called Blockbuster. If you're a fan of Steven Spielberg or George Lucas or you just like movies, there's a brand new original podcast drama series called Blockbuster that talks all about the events in the 1970s between Steven Spielberg and George Lucas leading up to some of their classic films like Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and one of my personal favorites, Jaws, right there. Boop. It's a biopic podcast set in the 1970s, and the actors who portray George Lucas and Steven Spielberg, their voice acting is great. You really get immersed into these stories and these situations. There's an original score, there's sound effects. It's insightful, there's all these facts and details that were researched by journalists. The thing I really like about the Blockbuster podcast is it's like a movie for your ears. It's a time machine that takes you back in time to the moments that almost destroyed Star Wars and led to Indiana Jones. So like I said, if you're a fan of movies and you want to know more facts and interesting events leading up to some of your favorite classic films by Spielberg or Lucas, definitely check out this six-part series podcast. It's completely free to listen to. You can check it out wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can go to the link down below to get blockbuster.com and listen to it free right there. Link down below. Check it out. John Wick 3 picks up right where the second movie left off. John Wick has been excommunicated and there's a bounty on his head. The best part of John Wick 3 is the first 25 minutes of this film. The first act of this film gives you everything you want to see in a John Wick movie and more. And for me, the best action sequence in the entire film happens in those first 20 minutes. It's this violent knife scene and it's everything I ever wanted to see with a knife and Keanu Reeves killing people, stabbing them in the face in their eyeballs and it holds nothing back. This movie earns that rated R rating in those first 20 minutes and I loved every second of it. And the thing that it all hinges on is the choreography between the stuntmen and just how they present the scene and it just, you feel every punch, every stab along the way. And it's sort of one of the coolest scenes I think I've ever seen in an action movie. So I give that two thumbs up. And this scene I'm talking about is a shining example of what separates the John Wick franchise from other modern day action films. It's well choreographed. They have stuntmen practicing these movements and each one matters. It's not just shaky cam and overuse of CG and jump cuts every five seconds in the scene. These action sequences are long one take and for the most part practical effects and stunts happening and that's why we buy into them as an audience. That's why we truly feel every stab or every punch. Now let's talk about John Wick himself, Keanu Reeves, and he's no stranger to action. It all started with that 1986 classic film, The Brotherhood of Justice. It's a terrible movie. It was made for TV. At one point, some guy gets stabbed in the ass with a knife. Go watch it. It's so bad. It's so bad. But then he went on to bigger and better things like Point Break, Speed, and The Matrix Trilogy. And now he's doing John Wick, and when it comes to some of the line delivery that Keanu gives in this film, it's things only he could say and get away with in a movie. Tell them all. Whoever comes, whoever it is, I'll kill them. I'll kill them all. If any other actor had the line delivery like Keanu has in this film, people would say it's the worst line delivery ever given. But when he does it, it's brilliant. And you buy into it, and I love it. Now, with all that said, let's talk more about the plot of this film, and that's where some of my negatives come into play. If you watch the second film, and if you haven't already, I don't know why you're watching a review for part three, but at the end of the second film, we learn that pretty much everyone in New York City is an assassin, and John Wick has a countdown until everyone is after him for a bounty on his head. And that was one of my biggest complaints with the second film. The overuse of having everyone as an assassin. You have homeless guys sitting in cardboard boxes, taxi drivers, just people sitting on park benches. It more or less diminished believability in the John Wick franchise for me. So what does the third movie do? Well, it takes my least favorite aspect of the second movie and really, really expands on it for the entirety of this movie, which was a letdown. 
Now, in all fairness, first and foremost, this is supposed to be an over-the-top action film. This is the kind of movie that I remember watching with my dad when I was 10 years old in the theater, thinking, this is awesome, this is rated R, and those are the sort of movies that define me and, and the dude I am today. Because you have John Wick, he's fighting ninjas on a motorcycle, he's riding a horse shooting a gun. I didn't go into this movie expecting an award-winning plot or screenplay, but I just wanted one that made sense. And what I mean by that is the entire second act of this film is one big waste of time. It leads to nothing, and by the third act of the movie, everything that happened in the second act of this movie doesn't matter. It does not matter. It's all undone, and it was a waste of your time, and it was simply used to fill up screen time. I just wish the screenwriters could have came up with something else that played into the third act of the movie. That way I didn't feel like I wasted my time for the last 35 minutes watching it. And it's during the second act where we get introduced to Halle Berry's character and she's pretty much like a badass John Wick assassin character who has a backstory with John Wick. And she has these two canine dogs who are awesome. They're almost more useful and more deadly than the dire wolves are in Game of Thrones. But outside of that, the second act of this movie is one big waste of time. And that's really my biggest negative with this movie. And one other negative I have with this film, and it was my least favorite character when I'm watching this film, was this female character who worked for the table. She pretty much made sure everything was in order and made sure people paid for their debts. And every time this character came onto the screen, it was a tedious, agonizing time in the movie theater. She was very bland. Her character design was super forced. She has like this edgy earring and this terrible neck tattoo. And it almost sounds like when she's giving her lines, it's a voiceover. Her character gives this very forced, sterilized line delivery. It's sort of like this. Hello, you will pay today for everything you did. I am a bad guy. So when it comes to John Wick 3 and the action sequences in this film, they are shining examples of what every other action film in Hollywood should watch and learn from when they're shooting their own sequences because everything in this film, as far as action goes, is top notch. It's exactly what you expect from a movie like this and a few of the scenes go above and beyond what I was expecting, especially that knife fight. If I could just rate this movie on that knife fight, I would give it an A+. But unfortunately, I can't do that because there's another two hours and five minutes of screen time that I have to factor into my grade for this film. So when it comes to the action sequences, all of those things are great, but it's the moments in between those action sequences that are supposed to tie them together, and all those fell flat for me. They weren't very engaging, and I felt like the plot overall was a little bit clumsy and messy, um, and I thought it easily could have been better, especially that second act, which just felt like a waste of time. And before I give you my grade, there's just one more nitpicky thing I want to mention because I'll never get to mention it anywhere else, but there's this huge fight sequence towards the end of the film, and if that would have been reduced or condensed down to maybe five minutes, it would, would have been great, but it goes on and on, and it sort of becomes mind-numbing because you see the same thing over and over, and it gets a little bit repetitive. I'm going to give John Wick 3 Parabellum uh, a B-. minus. It's a fun time. It's an action-packed movie, but the plot to this movie is not good. It's it's almost not sufficient enough for all these great action sequences because they deserve a better plot to tie them together. And that was my big disappointment with this movie. For me, the thing that makes the John Wick films so great is the small streamlined ideas that they present in these films that are so amazing to watch. Just John Wick fighting a guy with a knife. We don't need these huge convoluted plot ideas that fail. And the other thing I was expecting a little bit more of was sort of like an Escape from New York vibe in the beginning of this movie. And you sort of get that in the first 20 minutes, which are the best part of this movie. But after that, the movie starts to lose a little bit of focus. And the only thing that keeps it alive are the amazing action sequences every five minutes. So here's my question for you guys. And let me know down below. What did you think about John Wick 3? Or what is your favorite Keanu Reeves film? If I had to pick one... I'm definitely going to go with Point Break. And once again, big thanks to the Blockbuster podcast series because without it, I'd be doing this review in a cardboard box beside an assassin in a New York alleyway, according to John Wick 3. But either way, definitely check out the podcast. It's an awesome time. Like I said, if you're a fan of movies, Spielberg or George Lucas, and you want more insight to the events and details leading up or surrounding those movies, definitely check out this podcast series. I'll put the link down below to get blockbuster.com. You can get it wherever you listen to your podcast, iTunes, Spotify. Once again, the link is down below. Check it out. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. That way I can see you next time.